we're gonna make the legs for this tripod that we've been working on in the last two videos. If you haven't seen the first two episodes of this topology series, then go watch those first. I'm gonna put the links in the description. And if you're a beginner at Blender and if you wanna learn more about the techniques that you're gonna see me use in this video, it's all explained in my course for beginners. You can check that out with the link below. Let's get to work. We're gonna start by adding a circle with 16 vertices and we're gonna flip that circle sideways like this. In top view, we're gonna move it to the front somewhere around here. And then I'm gonna activate my shear tool and place a 3D cursor exactly in the middle of the circle. In this case, a 3D cursor is the pivot point, but it doesn't have to be. And you're gonna shear this by approximately 0.5 or minus 0.5. That's gonna put this circle at an angle like this. So now we're gonna delete some of the vertices from the bottom like this. Place a 3D cursor in the middle and go to top view. Press Alt E to spin. Check use duplicates and you want three steps here. These are gonna be the three three holes which are gonna hold the beads, they're gonna hold the legs, all right? If you want to adjust something, now is a good time to go to individual origins and scale these up or scale them down. And now we can start filling in these edges between these circles like this. We're gonna fill in four faces in total and I want another loop cut right here. Once I do that, I'm gonna take all these faces and from top view, I'm gonna do Alt E spin. Again, I want three steps. Now we can add a subdivision surface modifier, but the most important part here is we have to take all the geometry from the top like this, extrude right click, you're gonna lift that up a little bit. You're gonna scale this to zero on the Z axis and scale it down towards the middle. But once you do that, you're gonna have to take these vertices on the corners like this and scale them up a little bit. That's gonna make sure that you don't have any twisting on these faces as you would if these vertices were a little bit further inwards. Now you can see that this shit here isn't straight, but if you scale it up a little bit, your faces are aligned in a much cleaner way. I'm gonna take these vertices from the bottom here in the middle, I'm gonna lower them down a bit, then scale them down towards the middle just to make sure that this surface stays flat. And now we're gonna add some vertical loop cuts to each of these surfaces like this. Although before we add these loop cuts, it might be a good idea to take these vertical edge loops first. Deselect the edges at the top and just scale them down towards the middle a little bit to get this curvy part right here. Now you can add the vertical loop cuts and that's gonna make this thing down here a little bit pointier. Once you got this shape, you can just do extrude right click Alt S to add some thickness to this shape. You don't need much, you just need something like this. We're gonna delete this face loop at the top here and take this vertex loop in the middle, extrude that inwards a little bit. We're gonna go to face grid fill for this so we can fill this with some clean geometry. In this case, if we do span five offset five that seems to work pretty well although you can get away with having an end gone here as well because it's a flat surface anyway but since i told you we're doing hardcore topology we can't use end gones so i'm going to use quads but you can get away with an end gone if you want because nobody's watching you now we're going to extrude this thing at the top right here and lift it up a little bit and extrude again and scale it up w loop tools turn this into a circle once you turn it into a circle you're going to extrude it upwards a little bit more to give it some thickness so you can fill that inset with eye take these two edge loops right here and bevel them now we have to take this face at the top and extrude it up a little bit bit more then extrude it all the way to the middle where we need to have a tiny hole like this now this hole has to have a screw sticking out of it which is going to be attached to this part at the bottom down here which we made at the first episode so we can just take this shape right here duplicate that separate it to new object place the 3d cursor at the bottom so we can also place the origin point there now we're going to delete this entire outer surface here fill in the top and also bevel it to adjust the shading and we're going to correct the normals it doesn't really look like a regular screw but the shape is going to match this one in here perfectly so in theory this should work so we're gonna place the 3D cursor back into the middle of this hole here, and then we're gonna snap this onto the hole. We're also gonna make the hole just a little bit smaller, and then we can extrude this downwards. We're gonna select the screw and select the main object and parent it to the main object. And now we're gonna select this face loop down here, go to select, select loop, select boundary loop. That's gonna leave only the sharp edges selected here around the surface, which we had selected a second ago. With control B, we're gonna bevel that like this. Now the edges here are sharp, and now we can start creating the beads. So we're gonna place the 3D cursor to the middle of the object where we have the origin point currently and with shift a we're going to add a uv sphere bring that uv sphere out to the side so it fits properly and we're also going to adjust its scale just a little bit once it looks like it fits into the hole properly we're going to flip it sideways around the x-axis now duplicate this with shift d and place it somewhere over there and we're going to select a surface here in the front Control plus to expand this selection and you want to get somewhere just before the middle like this let's also pull this outwards a little bit so we can see what we're doing extrude right click alt s you want to have some thickness here now give me two more loop cuts right here and select these two face loops extrude right click alt s take these edges over here and also use alt s to deflect them a little bit more to make this part softer now we're going to use a subdivision surface modifier and we're going to bevel these edges right here you can throw this back into the main object here and rotate it a little bit so it's facing downward so you can see the entire hole and now we're going to take this other uv sphere and we're going to snap it onto this object right here scale it down a little bit so it fits into this hole and now for the second uv sphere you're going to select some geometry like this extrude that outwards then press x to delete these faces and place the 3d 
3D cursor right here at the end. Duplicate this cap right here with Shifty and snap it onto the 3D cursor. Now you want to get rid of this rotation. You want to make it straight once again. So you're going to set the rotation here to zero. In this case, we got to use 90 degrees and we're going to push it outwards just a little bit. And this is going to be the cap, which is going to hold the next bead. So we're going to join these two into the same object with control J, select the geometry here at the back and you're going to delete some of it. Now you want to take the vertices at the end of the hole in the front of the first bead and slide them backwards a little bit. You want to bring them to a point where you can select these two edge loops and bridge them with W. Once you do that, we're also going to bevel these edges on the inside here. If you want to, you can now use a subdivision surface modifier and smooth shading. I also want to make a little gap between this rubber thing right here and the ball itself. So we're going to select these edge loops on the sides. Control B to create a tiny bevel with just one segment. Extrude right click Alt S and delete the faces at the bottom. Now we have a little gap right here. Now we just have to stack these beads. So you're going to place a 3D cursor on this vertex loop right here because that's exactly in the middle of the sphere. Shift D to duplicate this section right here and snap that to the 3D cursor. As you can see, it connects perfectly. Now you can just keep repeating this until you have a whole bunch of copies. And I counted, we need nine of these in total, but at the end, we have to have something different. At the end, we have to have a ball and not an open hole like this. So we're going to select all the geometry on the inside of this hole and get rid of that. Now you're going to place a 3D cursor around this vertex loop and with shift A, you're going to add another UV sphere right here. Flip that shit sideways around the X axis and scale it down a little bit. So the scale matches this outer rubber piece like this. Now delete the back half right here and join this into the same object with control J. And now to connect these, just get rid of this face loop here. Then take these two edge loops, W bridge edge loops. It looks like we still have to make this ball a little bit bigger. So we're we're just gonna scale that up a little and now we have a smooth ball on the end so object shade smooth this is gonna be the part that touches the ground or the table or wherever you want to place your camera so here's what you got to do next you're gonna take this first one at the end right here and you're gonna parent it to the next one with control P then you're gonna take the second one and parent it to the third one with control P and just keep doing that until you get all the way to the back you want to parent the first set to this hole right here and then you want to parent the hole to this hub right here that way everything is connected to the hub in the middle if you rotate this joint it moves everything with it but if you rotate this one down here it only moves what is below and that allows you to adjust the shape of the legs just like you can in real life that's the whole point of this thing so let's pose these beads a little bit and make them look cool and make them look realistic once we make a pose we're going to take the entire chain right here we're going to place a 3d cursor in the middle of the hub shift the right click you're going to rotate this by 120 degrees around the z-axis to place it in the next hole then just do the same thing one more time and now you got three legs in total everything is attached to the middle and everything is rigged properly now you just got to connect all these pieces together so we're going to place a 3 cursor right here on this surface at the top take this object right here and snap that onto the surface here it looks like our hub is a little bit too big in comparison so we're going to leave the 3d cursor at the middle here but in edit mode we're going to scale everything down while the 3d cursor is the pivot point so scale this down to make the size look a little bit more reasonable in comparison and then you're also going to have to adjust the position of these balls on the outside here you want to make them stick out a little bit more now your proportions should be fine everything is set up everything is parented properly the model is completely ready i'm going to let you guys download this shit on patreon and also inside digitally enhanced so you guys are going to be able to study the topology for this object you're going to see how i put this shit together and how you can create certain features and this is going to be extremely important because having good topology is one of the most important skills when you're a 3d modeler anytime you're trying to get a job at a serious studio or something they're going to check your fucking topology skills if it's a serious studio chances are it's going to be pretty important so you're going to make sure you get your shit together and like i said at the beginning guys check out the digitally enhanced program we've got a bunch of content in there where we're going to teach you how to get your shit together so you can become a professional we got a bunch of guys in there who are all working towards the same goal. Everybody's trying to become a professional. Everybody's trying to pull themselves together, pull their head out of their ass. So you can put yourself in a position where you can start making a living off of your skills in today's digital world. But let me know in the comments what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.